In this video, I'm going to focus on capacitive reactants. So we have a 50 microfarad capacitor, and it's in series with a 40 ohm resistor and a 12 volt AC signal that has a frequency of 60 hertz. So let's start with a picture. And so here's the resistor, and here is the capacitor. So we have a 40 ohm resistor. And the capacitance is 50 microfarads. And we have a 12 volt AC signal with a frequency of 60 hertz. Calculate the capacitive reactance. So what's the formula to calculate the capacitive reactance? Perhaps you've seen this one. Xc is 1 divided by 2 pi Fc. So F is the frequency, which is 60 hertz. And the capacitance, we have a 50 microfarad capacitor. So micro is 10 to the minus 6. And so go ahead and plug this in. So you should get 53 0 0.05 ohms. So that's Xc, which I'm going to put it right here. Part B. Determine the impedance of the circuit. The impedance is represented by the symbol Z and it's equal to the square root of r squared plus xl minus xc squared. So xl is the inductive reactance, and we don't have any inductors in this circuit, so therefore xl is equal to zero. So z is going to be the square root of r squared, r is 40, xl is zero, xc is 53.05 squared. Now once we square it, this value will become positive. So it's going to be the square root of 40 squared plus 53.05 squared. And so in this example, Z is 66.44 ohms. And so that's the impedance of the circuit. So now let's move on to part C. What is the RMS current in the circuit? Well, we know that V is equal to IR. V of the source, let's call this VS, that's equal to the current, the RMS current, times the impedance. So the RMS current, it's going to be the source voltage divided by the impedance. So in this example, VS is 12 volts. The impedance is 66.44 ohms. And so the current that flows in the circuit is 0 0.1806 amps. And so that's the RMS current in the circuit. Now let's calculate the voltage across the capacitor and the resistor. So let's start with the voltage across the resistor. Based on Ohm's law, it's equal to the current times the resistance. So that is the RMS current, which is 0 0.1806 amps, times the resistance of 40 ohms. And so the voltage across it is 7.224, or 7.224 volts. Now let's do the same thing for the capacitor. So the voltage across the capacitor is going to equal the RMS current multiplied by the capacitive reactance. So that's going to be 0 0.1806 amps. And the capacitive reactance is 53.05 ohms. And so this is going to be 9.5808. Now, I don't know if you saw my last video on inductive reactants, 
But if you have, I mentioned that the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor, it did not add to the voltage of the source, that is the RMS voltages. And the situation is the same for this example. The voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor doesn't add to 12 volts. However, there is an equation that describes the relationship between those voltages. And that is that Vs is equal to the square root of Vr squared plus Vl minus Vc squared. So Vr, that's 7.224. Vl is 0. And VC is 9.5808. So go ahead and type that in your calculator. This will give you, wait, I have to retype that in. This will give you 11.999 volts, which is about 12 volts. And so that's how you know if these values are correct. That is, if these are the root mean square velocity values. Now let's move on to the last part, part E. How much power is absorbed by the circuit? Now you need to realize that the resistor absorbs energy. The capacitor, it absorbs energy but it releases it back. So as the AC signal constantly reverses direction, the capacitor is absorbing and releasing energy. And so there's no net transfer of energy with the capacitor. So the net power consumed by the circuit is the power consumed by the resistor because the resistor is always consuming energy and never gives it back. So that's going to be I squared times R so I is 0 0.1806 and the resistance is 40 ohms. And so the power absorbed by this circuit is 1.305 watts. Now let's confirm this answer with another equation. So P is also equal to VRMS, that's the voltage of the source times the RMS current times the power factor. Now let's calculate the power factor first. It's equal to the resistance divided by the impedance. The resistance in this example is 40 ohms. The impedance is 66.44. So the power factor in this example is 0.602. So now let's use this equation. So the voltage of the source is 12 volts. The current in the circuit is 0 0.1806 amps and the power factor 0 0.602. And so this gives us the same answer of 1.305 watts. So you have two ways in which you can get the power consumed by the circuit. If you know the current flowing through the resistor, this is probably the best way to do it. But if you have, let's say, the voltage of the source, the current flowing in the circuit, and also the power factor, then this formula works as well. Now let's talk about the capacitive reactance formula. Xc is 1 over 2 pi Fc. So what is the relationship between the frequency and the capacitive reactance? If you increase the frequency in the circuit, the capacitive reactance will decrease since F is in the denominator of the fraction. And so as you decrease the capacitive reactance, the current will increase. Likewise, if you increase the capacitance, the capacitive reactance will decrease, causing an increase in current if you have an AC signal. And so like inductors, capacitors can be used to act as a filter for certain frequencies. Now, if you have a steady direct current flowing in a circuit, 
this circuit will not pass the DC current. If you have a DC current, it has no choice but to flow in this direction. So a capacitor can block a DC signal, but it passes an AC signal. Because an AC signal is constantly changing direction, the capacitor is constantly charging and discharging. So you have a current flow in this direction and a current flow in that direction. But keep in mind, you have an insulated material between the two plates of a capacitor. So no electrons actually flow through this capacitor. But when you have an AC signal, they can flow in the Ys of the circuit in both directions, but they don't flow through the capacitor. But the net effect is that an AC signal can bypass the capacitor, but a capacitor blocks a DC signal. Now let's talk about two different types of AC signals. A high frequency AC signal and a low frequency AC signal. Now a high frequency AC signal can easily bypass a capacitor because as you increase the frequency, the capacitive reactance will decrease and the current will increase. So a high frequency signal will pass this circuit, but a low frequency signal will prefer to go in this direction instead. So this particular circuit, it acts as a filter. It blocks low frequency AC signals, but it passes high frequency AC signals. Now the other one works in the reverse direction. A high frequency signal will prefer to pass through the capacitor since the resistance or the capacitor reactance is low, but a low frequency signal will flow through the resistor. So this particular circuit will allow a low frequency AC signal to pass through it. However, it will filter out any high frequency AC signals.